I was never doing any drone video because I think there are many YouTubers who do it much better and besides I was more interested in other professional filming equipment. But when I finally saw Inspire 3 and when I learned about the possibilities of this equipment, I started to wonder if it is still a drone or maybe something more. And I have a strong feeling that we are now getting into another unexplored field of cinematography. That's why I wanted to get one as soon as possible. Stop that. But let's start from the beginning. Who is this equipment for? I think we all know that since the first Inspire model came out, it was a top of the line drone designed mainly for professionals. And each new model was much better than other smaller consumer drones. I'm not to say that the small drones are bad, but in my opinion the major advantage and difference is the image quality, codex and most importantly the dual operator option. The pilot is totally focused on the safe flying and the operator is totally focused on a good shot. Of course, such cooperation needs to be harmonized and matched, but when you can build a good team, basically everything you shoot will be epic. Besides, the amazing overall quality of the Inspire series is probably best demonstrated by the fact that basically still even now, the shots from this drone, which is already 7 years old, are absolutely amazing and you will find Inspire on the most professional film sets. So the question is, will the Inspire 3 in another 7 years still be the absolute number one? I think it will and here are some improvements that prove it. New 8K IRL Cinema Camera, Dual Native ISO, New Wide Angle FPV Pilot Camera, O3 Pro Transmission System, New High Performance Batteries and Charger, New Shooting Options, New Era of Precision, New Era of Safety, and New Accessories. Inspire 3 is the only completely integrated professional aerial cinema camera in the whole industry. And when it comes to the quality of the image, it is absolutely epic. I was shocked by the 8K RAW Cinema DNG footage and when I was looking through the single frames, I realized that each frame was a phenomenal quality photo. Excellent nice shot capabilities thanks to dual ISO, excellent dynamic range, Cinema DNG, ProRes RAW, extremely easy color grading, just great. And yes, of course you can always use a better camera with some great cinema lenses, but for this kind of setup you need a few people and really a lot of time. So something that makes the Inspire drone absolutely outstanding for years is the incredible mobility, simplicity and speed with which you can be ready for shooting. It's a bit like the Ronin 4D, you take it out of your backpack and you are immediately ready for any kind of shot. Speaking of the Ronin 4D, it's of course worth to mention that it is a perfect combination because it is exactly the same sensor that in the near future we will find in the 8K version and exactly the same color science. Here I have to admit that I was absolutely sure that the X9 gimbal from the Ronin 4D would be fully compatible with the Inspire 3 and that in a way would be a great solution, you know, different lens mounts, lighter focus and much more, but now I understand that such solution from a technical perspective was simply not possible and here DJI had to compromise certain things to get the best possible effects and performance in the air. So the X9 Air is basically an extremely lightweight version of the X9. There is no dual motor in the tilt axis, it is built with many lighter components, there is no axis locking mechanism or axis balancing options, there are no removable mounts, so basically at this point it is only designed for the L-series lenses. Now, about the lenses, you will find at least a few lenses with DL mounts on the market. On the back of the gimbal there is a kind of option to attach a contraweight, so with the adapters the list of compatible lenses will definitely get bigger. I already have a few ideas for this, but I will talk about that in some of the next videos. On the other hand, something that is certainly a great benefit of the original DL lenses here is that they are extremely lightweight, extremely good quality and that you don't have to calibrate them in any way. Just like in the Ronin 4D, you simply swap the lens and you are basically ready to fly. It's also worth mentioning here that the 18mm lens is a brand new product from DJI, which of course is also fully compatible with the Ronin 4D, but it is not the only compatible thing between the Inspire and the Ronin 4D. Something that makes me incredibly excited is that the Inspire 3 is another piece of equipment in the ecosystem that DJI has created. Like the Ronin 4D and DJI transmission, the new Inspire also gets the most advanced video transmission technology, which is O3, that gives us a crazy range. And yes, of course, probably not many of us will fly that far, but 
for me much more important is the incredible stability of the connection which is really beyond any comparison. This opens up totally new horizons in even more professional and most challenging projects, such as Live TV, where signal stability is an absolute priority. When it comes to signal distribution and output types, you have a very wide choice of transmissions here. I hope that in the next firmware updates, there will also be an option for output signal not only progressive but also interlaced, which is the standard in Live TV. However, at this moment I've been using it in two configurations that is Full HD and 25 and 50 frames per second and Ultra HD 30 frames per second. Now about signal distribution, we have a pure signal output only by HDMI and yes I agree with the opinions that SDI would be more professional but for such application all you need is a good Obi-Wan engineer and good converter that in addition converts your signal to the way you want it or what is absolutely fantastic, you can use DJI Hybrid Monitor. That's right, the same transmission technology in Inspire and Ronin 4D means that accessories are also compatible, so you can use the monitor from the Ronin 4D together with the hand grips, and that way you can use it as a control monitor B, then you have the full option of camera control, focus control and clean output over SDI. What's more, you have a few configuration to choose from where you can expand your setup with additional monitors and accessories such as a 3-channel fellow focus and master wheels if you need them for more precise shots, close-up or handheld camera style. Of course, I don't think that anybody will buy an Inspire 3 with the main use as a handheld camera, but we all know how many creative shots you can get using the drone in combination with other accessories. It's not only about creative shots, sometimes it's a matter of safety and sometimes about an area with a flying restriction. And this is exactly the situation in which the Inspire 3, even though it has a pretty large design, works perfectly as a regular camera. Now, to attach the Inspire to a car, you only need suction cups and the simplest clamps, and for handheld use, you basically don't need anything. But if you want to take combined shots and keep your hands as far away from the propellers as possible, or attach the Inspire to more professional car mounts, you can find special hand grips or use clamps and tubes, so you can make any mount that you need. Now, the smaller arms have a diameter of 22 mm and it is difficult to find clamps for this size, but just use a small hammer and slightly expand the standard 20 mm clamps that you can easily find on the market. I use mini clamps with which I can configure any type of mount that I need and because of this the Inspire will work well both as a drone and in the style of a handheld camera. This allows me to take shots that are very dynamic but also really close and very precise. Now if you are talking about precision, then here it's time for RTK or real-time kinematics. So almost all aircraft that we know have a consumer grade GPS and electronic compass inside, comparable to the one we have in smartphones. Such a system gets information from satellites and this allows the aircraft to navigate and hold a precise position. However, this kind of GPS gives you a precision of about one meter. Now we all know that reality is quite different and there are many different things that create problems and failure of precision. So what RTK gives us is the correction of GPS data in real time, resulting in much better positioning of the drone in each axis with centimeter precision. Now just because Inspire has an RTK navigation options, of course doesn't mean you have to use it. For regular flying, the built-in GPS module is completely enough why, if you want to fly somewhere close to the steel structure, power plants or need centimeter precision in your shots, then RTK will definitely be one of the tools that you need. What's more, if you are talking about precision shots. One of the things that is absolutely essential for professional filmmakers is to control everything that is in the frame and what is actually happening on set. You know, I mean the lighting, the set design, the talent performance and of course the camera movement. Without the perfect harmony of these few elements, it is extremely difficult to get a very good shot. That's why something that has always been a bit of a concern for me in using drones is the missing of that precision and repeatability. But at this point, I think we have finally reached a kind of major revolution in drone flying. I mean, look, imagine any shots, even the most complicated camera movement. Now, it doesn't matter if you fly fast or slow, no matter how smoothly, all you have to do is create a sequence of points for the drone to fly through, and that's it. But be careful, 
it doesn't work in a way that you select let's say a square track with fast turns and the inspire will keep the straight line and the whole track no way it all depends on the speed with which you fly and unfortunately you can beat physics here so keep that in mind when planning your track it is extremely important for the safety of people around you on the other hand wherever you might have a problem with a fast and complicated shot now you can make it very slowly and precisely and then repeat it much faster this is truly amazing so repeatable roads especially when combined with rtk station is something unbelievable and it opens up a lot of creative application that we basically didn't know before i remember how many amazing things could be achieved by using a repeatable slider and now all this will be available in aerial shots as well maybe in combination with 3d and virtual production However, something that I love even more and that I already cannot live without is the 3D dolly. It is something incredible. You plan yourself an extremely precise movement while keeping full control over the speed and movement of the camera. What's fantastic about it, you have more control over what's going on and you can change the speed and framing depending on what you are actually shooting. This will be super useful in sports and in very dynamic scenes where the talent also cannot always perform things perfectly the same way two or three times. I know this may sound crazy and totally unreal, but honestly, this is one of those improvements that will allow even a beginner pilot to take a truly epic shot and in a totally safe way. Every experienced pilot will appreciate this new FPV camera which gives you a great view of the environment and more importantly much better performance in night flying out of sight which of course gives you much higher safety. Another cool thing is the tilt boost which gives you a choice over the landing gear positions and when you take them down you can look up almost vertically while still keeping a very good camera angle when looking down and thanks to this you get a range of motion in the entire tilt axis like never before. The safety of the drone and the people around you is also covered by the new sensor, which you can also customize depending on your experience as a pilot. Inspire 3 also got a new type of battery and new charging hub, from which you can also charge the remote controller. Flying time claimed by DJI is about 28 minutes, I tested it on a very windy day and the flight time about 22 minutes, honestly in such conditions its result is very impressive for a drone of this size. And what's more, having just three pairs of batteries and charging them in the fast charging options, you are able to work basically all day without a break. All this in great, very elegant carrying case, into which you can put absolutely all the batteries, lenses, chargers, harness, cameras, vest, just everything. But is the equipment in this case is worth such a price in my opinion? I think you all know the answer. I've mentioned this a few times that with basically every piece of equipment from DJI, it is so that you can buy it even without knowing the full specification and details because you are always pretty sure that every new camera, every new gimbal, every new drone is getting more and more powerful. The image quality gets better and better, the dynamic range gets higher and higher, and there is always a kind of jump into the future. This time is no exception. Here, it's not even about the price because it seems to me that no one will buy this drone as a toy because it is a tool for work, a tool for making money and as I said, if Inspire 2, even after so many years, is a machine that is still used in the most expensive and best productions, then honestly, you can be sure that Inspire 3 will serve you for the next few years. What's more, I think that each of the new flying options will be improved step by step, so I'm very curious about the many new and epic shots that can be taken using the Inspire 3. Of course, this kind of self-flying is a bit of scary in a way and brings some concerns about the next improvements. You know, it's a bit like fears that machines, AI and new technology will be better than humans in certain jobs and in a few years a filmmaker will only have a computer instead of camera and cinema drones will fly all by themselves without humans. And who knows, maybe this is what the future will look like, but at this point I believe that it is enough to learn how to use and collaborate with these machines and I think that the result we can achieve thanks to them go far beyond our imagination.